offer a perspective uh, on a chapter that that resonated with me as I read uh, M.A.'s book. Uh, okay, so M.A.'s chapter, Deathbound, The Thug Life, had the most resonance in my experience reading this book because I felt that it, I felt that this chapter allows Dr. Ellis to explore the question of how do urban black males come to terms with the discourse that comes with their bodies? And furthermore, how does this coming to terms factor into or make unsteady or align with our own anxieties, desires, obsessions, or investments in black corporate reality? I think these questions are especially important for M.A.'s work because they allow him to seek for the answers in the liminal spaces between pop, uh, public and popular culture. Spaces where we can find urban black masculinity represented as both an evolving and contested site of identity <laughs> formation. It may argues that in this space we find black men who buy into their own oppression, yet they find a kind of salvation in their collisions and collusions with that oppression. For me, these types of interactions make lucid the histories of black masculinity born in the afterlife of slavery. This history and afterlife keeps in perspective the conditions of subjectivity for urban black men in public and popular culture. Dr. Ellis's explorations of these conditions reveal their deathly agency. They reveal how urban black males paradoxically find life and meaning in death, not so much as the end of things, but as a way of negotiating agency to decide possible endings or possible selves. As one who studies how language can work to produce and persuade, I read death in M.A.'s work as a rhetorical construct, a heuristic for production, uh, and, and a way for understanding black vernacular worldviews. Uh, in this respect, I believe that Dr. Ellis was interested in how urban and prison masculinities might function as epistemology. His framing of thug life as a site of empowerment and political possibility incites us to pay attention to how embodied performances of black masculinity offers a way of knowing, a way of making knowledge that is actualized in praxis. Urban black males such as Tupac, whom M.A. talks about a lot in this book, who take hold of and enact what Dr. Ellis calls the thug imaginary through his words and, and choices is what David Gresson would call a personal choice rhetoric of accepting who I am and what my history has forced me to become. This thug imaginary pushes textual boundaries. It's a theory that pushes for the ontological undoing of cultural scripts and ideology of black male identity formation. A thug imaginary is a window into understanding how the Tupacs, the Bigger Thomases, the Stringer Bells, and the Troy Davises that we know and experience might come to grips with their own sense of power and powerlessness. Dr. Ellis's work gives us a way of thinking about the crisis of investiture around black men and their bodies and their history. Furthermore, his work raises the question of how are black males made most visible and meaningful in public domains and reveals how these domains can be deathly scenes. He reminds us that in the midst of black popular culture's counter hegemonic agency, the residue of colonial sensibilities still inform its foundation. For Dr. Ellis, death becomes a site for theory building that pushes urban black masculinity, and more specifically, in my understanding, thug life beyond the restrictions of a thug's material conditions. And because of this, it offers a new and much needed theory on the precarious and, pe and peculiar lives of urban black men. And thinking about um, what to say this afternoon about Dr. Ellis's work, I wanted to find a way to speak on his intellectual pursuits through the totality of my experiences with him. And initially that was a hard thing for me to do. Um, but in my articulation of the value of his work to my own intellectual ruminations, I wanted to reflect upon how this reading, how, how reading his book was a nostalgic experience for me. Um, it was a moment of remembering. In Toni Morrison's Beloved, when Seth explains remembering to Denver, she states, if a house burns down, it's gone, but the place, the picture of it stays. And not just in my memory, but out there in the world. What I remember is a picture floating around there outside my head. I mean, even if I don't think about it, the picture of what I did or knew or saw is still out there. 
If we must die from bigger times to bigger smalls, It's a remaining place for me. It is a picture of me sitting in M.A.'s office, going over ideas about what I wanted to write about black masculinity as a dissertation topic, and him either saying, that sounds good, but how could you make this more compelling? <laughs> or him stating frankly, yeah, okay, that's cool, but you ain't saying nothing new. <laughs> so what still remains out here in the world are his words, this book, uh, that admonishes me to always push myself to be a good writer and intellectual. Uh, and so I remember being a second year grad student renting out a room in a house on Chestnut Street, waking up and walking downstairs every morning and seeing M.A. Sitting, sitting on his couch, leaned forward with his laptop in front of him, working through his ideas, working on this book, teaching me about tenure clocks and all that shit. <laughs> We talk about D'Angelo's Untitled video, trying to figure out what that muscle was called in the lower abdomen area. <laughs> oh yeah, the lower internal oblique. I remember all the books on black masculinity that I would take off of M.A.'s bookshelf and forget to give back, and him calling me looking for his books. And most vividly, I remember weekday afternoons listening to hip hop bass lines reverberate through the ceilings onto the second floor and me taking trips downstairs to see what song was playing. The playlist would move from Biggie Smalls to some old school song by The Roots, followed by some abstract house music. And May made his love for music work and in and synergy with his vocation as a writer. These moments were the adage that was our shaped appreciation for good music and ideas. Dr. Ellis saw that being an intellectual didn't have to be removed from the everyday loves of his life. He saw that it could be connected directly to where people were in the world and what they thought about it. So if we must die is an imminent uh, expression of this belief. And that's, that's it.